One of the most important parts of AI automation is the planning phase, but so many people just don't really think about that and don't think about the importance of that phase. So today we're diving into how to plan AI automations. I'm gonna walk through this workflow map, but before I do, this is episode number one of a nine part series where I'm diving into NAN and Airtable and building out AI systems. So these systems are proper systems that can be used. Here's a few examples of them. There's an IG news post system, a webinar system, a podcast system, a voice notes to content system, a project planning system that automatically assigns tasks. So everything we talk about here is about systems. And I run makebigmoves.ai, which is an agency that builds AI systems for clients. And if you look at some of the builds that we've done, all of them include your NAN automation or your make.com automation, but they have an actual system on top, an interface on top. And this is the most important thing to remember when it comes to building these is that you want to build a system so that either your own team or your clients adopt that system. If it's not a system, then it's actually just not going to work. And let me show you the perfect example. So this is a webinar workflow where someone sent me this webinar workflow from another creator. And this creator had it in there as part of their school community. And it simply was just laid out like this, a basic Airtable flow, and it had a form that triggered the flow. And then you just had a few different views in here. So I decided to just rebuild it from scratch, basically. And we built out a proper system. So systems is thinking about database structure and designing the database so that the proper relations between each database tables are there available. But also it includes building out these types of interfaces. So we have things built out like our brand assets. One of the most important things when generating AI content is making sure that your outputs are on brand. So we need to put these into this system once and then we feed these into every single AI automation because we can, we can add these fields into every single flow that we build. So these are the types of things that we're doing in this series is taking these really basic automations that maybe you find from other creators or online or different template libraries and turning them into proper systems. The other thing with systems is that we can add into this webinar workflow, for example, as many brands as we want. We simply added the, a new brand in via this form and we don't ever need to touch the automation behind the scenes because it's built in a way that allows the right variables to be sent into the system rather than having to change the automation. So that's really what we're diving into. And the first place that I always start with clients, I'm gonna to get to a few examples of workflows that we've mapped out and planned with clients in just a second. And you can see some interesting things here in these. But the most important thing that we speak to them about is that we want to understand how their workflow actually operates. So we've broken it down into a process here, which is capture, analyze, optimize, and automate. So first we wanna make sure they're capturing what they do. So it could be a recording where they screen or video share it. It could be task narration, it could be document that they have. So step-by-step, -step, it could be decision points and required tools. So we want them to capture exactly what they are doing in order to understand what the workflow is actually doing. But a really critical step in this is actually analyzing and understanding why they do it. So why do they make certain decisions at certain times in this step-by-step -step process? Like why, let's say they're generating an output with ChatGPT and why do they choose one output over another output? Like what makes a good output versus a bad output? That's what we really need to understand when it comes to AI automation because you don't have that human analysis through every single step of the automation. So that's why you need to train the AI at different points of the workflow to think how the operator thinks of that workflow, the owner of that workflow. So that's what we do in the analyze stage. And then we were looking for some, some common elements and repetitive tasks. And then we're just really asking that question, why? Like, why is this X step important? Why is it done that way? Why don't we do it the other way? What is the desired response from this decision? Understanding that deeply allows us to build much more efficient and optimized workflows. From there, we go and optimize everything. So what I'm about to get to is we'll do like a first system draft, like a, a workflow of the first system that help we understand it as the builder for this client. But what generally happens is there's a version two that will happen. So we go to them with like a version one. And this is based on our first discussion. This is how we think it's going to work. What do you suggest? There's another variation here where the client just went through and added some comments or like crossed out certain steps that are not required. 
So there's always going to be that back and forth. So that's like super important. And then finally, once we have a really good map, we automate. But here's something I really want you to understand. No matter how long we spend on these maps inside of Miro board or other whiteboarding tools, it never turns out that way. So even if we spend an hour or 10 hours, we never get the map totally correct because as you start building, you start to understand that there are limitations in the way that you've thought about it inside your head or maybe there are new additions that the client wants to make as you're checking in with them all the time. So there's not been a single time out of the dozens, maybe hundreds of automations that we've built that the map that we create has ever been 100% accurate to the final design. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because you don't want to spend too much time in that process. The faster you can do it, the better, but you have to just build enough inside of the mapping and the planning component so that you can convey the right message to the client so that your client knows that you are actually on the same page as what they are. So we have a whole bunch of other frameworks that we like to rely on here and talk about at Big Moves, but I'm going to come back to put some of those in some later videos. Now, like I mentioned, a lot of what I'm talking about here is going to get explained deeper and put into practice as we're building out all of these workflows, these eight workflows after episode number one. So make sure you subscribed for that so that you can build along with us and understand how we actually turn very simple automations into really detailed and amazing systems that clients will adopt. Here's an example of a really good one that actually turned out pretty well. This automation essentially helps an e-commerce company scrape a whole bunch of products from other websites so they can roll them up onto their own website but then transforming the product name and description and so forth into something that's relevant for their business and their brand voice now they were doing this individually in chat gpt and each one was taking somewhere between 5 to 15 minutes per url and we built this system now that allows them to bulk import up to 50 urls at a time and this system will just run through and scrape all of those and do everything with basically two button clicks. So what used to take them hours and hours to do a few dozen products now takes them literally like 30 seconds of work to add it in and they let it sit and run for 10, 20 minutes. And then they come back and just analyze it for maybe five minutes per product. So it's cut down the time required for them by, I don't even know how much, like a hundred X. It saves them tens of thousands of dollars a year. And the way that we got this from the client was they just had this long document here of the steps that they go through. Then the, so there's like, okay, this is what we do. Step one, step two, step three. Fortunately, they had the prompts they were using so we could use the prompts, but then they added in things down the very bottom as to like what their excluded words are, their tone of voice, all of those types of things. So the way that most people would read this would be, okay, I need to generate these words with this tone of voice and I'm just gonna add this tone of voice into the NAN automations itself. But this is the perfect example as to why we don't do that because over time, so we built version one of this workflow and it kind of worked okay, but it wasn't getting the desired result. And as we were optimizing, we found out that we needed to change the tone of voice that the client had a number of times. Now, if you had have just built that tone of voice into the NAN automation, then the only way to edit it and to make changes to this workflow would be to log into NAN, find the right node, make the changes, update it. Then you would run it a few times, have to come back in. Whereas now we built a system, and this is the Airtable database structure up here. We built a system where that brand voice sits in the brand assets. And then we have a table interface on top, just like what we've done here. We had an interface on top where if we needed to adjust any of the brand voice, then we simply just do it from this interface here. And then the next time we run the automation, it would be updated. So again, coming back to the planning component of this is we need to take the full long documentation that clients have, understand it. So we're basically ingesting it and understanding it and then figuring out, okay, how do I need to structure a database? So that it allows me to build a proper system where we can make edits from inside the interface or inside the system that then changes the outputs that we get from the NAN automation. If there's anything you need to know, like that is the entire thing is like build these systems, don't build automations. You might get a couple of clients here and there, but they're never going to adopt your automations. They're never going to continue as a client. Let me come back into this second one here. So this was another client where 
he wanted to work with us and he had a few ideas, but he still wasn't entirely sure. So we started off with helping him with a few ideas after our first call. Uh, we actually ended up on a project workflow based on our project command product, which he liked, but we made a few changes to that. And one of the big changes was he wanted to automatically assign tasks based on a recording from a planning session with his team. So essentially build an automation that watches a Google Meet. Anytime there's a Google Meet with a recording, it will automatically download it, transcribe it, share it with all the right team members and guests, and then automatically assign or create tasks and then assign those tasks to the right team members in his business. So originally we had uh, quite a long process and he didn't want it to be so long. Like he had to actually make quite a few human touch points in order to get it to basically the first step. So we went through and we had a whole bunch of comments that he left and then we crossed out the different parts of the process that we no longer needed but it didn't end there once we started building we came up with a whole bunch of other barriers and challenges along the way we had our database structure here like this but the way that their system was built using an erp system we couldn't actually get the structure to be exactly how we wanted it so we had to make a whole bunch of changes to this workflow as well because of the systems that we use. You might get used to mapping something out in one system, like in an Airtable database, for example, but then you work with a client who doesn't use that system and it's actually built in slightly different ways. So you need to actually give them enough information so that they wanna start working with you and getting started with the job. But once you move into the actual software tools, you begin to see that, okay, there's limitations in the API, there's limitations in the way that they structure their database. There's a whole host of other different scenarios that you need to think about. So again, it's just like, how can we create enough notes that will allow us to get started and enough of a picture for the client to make sure they're on board with the direction that we want to go. And then we start building and we figure it out from there. Then I mentioned this in the beginning as well. A lot of the times when you're working with a client, the way that you understand the project and the way that they're trying to explain it to you, you don't get fully aligned on the first call. And sometimes it takes building out or mapping out version number one of the full system, and then doing a second call with them to show them, okay, this is based on our last call, this is how we believe it is going to work and our understanding of this process. But you as the business owner, as the person responsible for that workflow, you obviously have way more insider knowledge than we do, way more business knowledge than we do. So we wanna run through this with you to check that we're actually on the same page. So when we build out this version one for the full system, we actually weren't on the same page. And that's when we then were able to get on the same page with this client and build out a, a version two, where we simply just use a an 11 lab system instead of a much bigger system that we were going to build out. And the client was actually really happy with this. And, and actually it's become an incredible product ever since we mapped this out. It's way more detailed than what it is now. And we're going to be providing that to our AI Insiders members in the next month as well. So you might want to check that out pretty soon because it's pretty incredible. But the whole point of telling you this, so this client here is, we started with this project workflow. We built an actual system where things can be tracked. And because of that, it, we, he was then confident to spend another $9,000 with us to build out a second system as well. So this is the whole point, right? Is when you build systems that clients adopt, then they're going to stay with you way longer. If you build a system where maybe they use it for a week or two, and then everybody stops using it on their team, everybody's confused, the client really doesn't know how it works, then they're just not going to come back. So we want to build really solid systems every single time. Even if the client wants something simple and easy, just go the extra mile, spend the extra couple of hours building an interface on top, making it easy for them to actually add new team members in and train them. If you go that extra mile, I can promise you it'll pay off 10 times on the back end with repeat customer business, with referrals because you've done such a good job. This is how you're going to build a great reputation building these systems. And this is what we're going to be doing for the rest of the week. So again, we have eight more episodes of this build series coming up. So make sure you subscribe. These are actual build systems where you're essentially like looking over my shoulder. Some of them go for around about an hour. Others go for up to like two hours. I think there might even be one for two and a half hours. So these are like proper builds where you're looking over my shoulder and going through the entire process, even the mistakes that I'm making and how I figure out those mistakes. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.